Hello everybody and welcome back to the Yellow Squared podcast. It's myself, Ned. I'm joined by my brother, James. Good afternoon, James. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you, mate. How are you? Happy bank holiday to you. Yeah, same to you. Not doing too badly. Of course, the football on the pitch wasn't the best on Blackburn, but we'll get into that very shortly. So, James, Mm. do we have uh, a slight cause for concern at this point? I know we're only, what, four games in now? Yeah. No goal in four and a half hours of football in the Championship. 55 shots in three games, no goals. Are you starting to feel slightly concerned? Um, I am, yeah, obviously concerned. No no win in three, uh, no win in four if you include the Stevenage game. And yeah, barring a blitzing first half against QPR, who I think are, are sort of, in, to some degree, proving themselves to be um, troubled uh, this season. Uh, yeah, of course, you've got to be concerned. I think the only thing that's keeping me going at the moment is um, the fact that we are um, we're, we're, uh, we're, we are dominating games in terms of possession. We are creating, I think, I think modern coaches would call them opportunities. Uh, we're having good moments. Yeah. Uh, if uh, if you want to go down that kind of route, we're getting the ball into good into relatively good areas. Uh, we just can't find that uh, final pass slash that little bit of luck that I think we need to for one chance to go in the net. And I, I think that's what the team needs at the moment is just that belief to come back to them yeah. that they can score yeah. goals. Uh, because because I think the team is, is playing relatively well. Um, I think the concerns surrounding the defence are... Um, are, are kind of warranted, but but also... Barring what was, and let's you know, we'll address it early. Or in, in my opinion, what was a very, very well taken goal oh, that yeah. was against, that was completely against the run of play. Mm. Um, if 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 we can say that, I thought we dominated Blackburn yesterday in in terms of where we were in the pitch. I think we were just let down by by a massive um, inability to to take our chances. Um, so yeah, I, I of course it's concerning, but I think um, I've seen more in the in the four games this season that we've played uh, to to think that at least there is a plan and there is a determination to enact the plan mm. compared to um, what we saw for forty six games last season. However, uh, my concern is we need to get a couple of results early to get the team, the squad, the fans, the board. Uh, to buy into what's happening. If results don't come, then I think uh, I think panic stations are hit pretty quickly, uh, and then uh, and then I think uh, we're into a world of hurt. What about yeah, you? yeah, and no, I agree. I think uh, what what's mainly different from this season to last season is you can quite clearly see that there's a style of football going yeah. on 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 the pitch it doesn't seem like they've got no idea what they're doing doesn't seem like the coaches just said basically go out and do whatever you want which it seemed at times like last season the players were very you know disengaged with the with the manager didn't know what they were doing didn't really care and i think honestly this season it has shown me that the players can buy into something and i think it will come with time but how much time will Gino Pozzo give Valerian Ishmael? That is the that's got to be you know I don't want to say that four games in, but it's the worst start to a season we've had yeah since was it 2019-20 where we didn't win a game until November, you know it, mm. and how with with the track record obviously I would never sack Ishmael this early yeah. into the season. Yeah. Unless we were literally bottom, hadn't scored a goal, hadn't even gone into the opposition's half at any point. But with Gino Pozzo's track record, these are the questions that are now going to be asked. And how much, you know, how how long can we go without scoring a goal? Is exactly is it is a you know a big a big question mark over over Watford? Uh, I think. Um... I think the so uh, the the thing that the Potsos have always said 
uh, about sort of managers and managerial sackings is is yes, whilst they are clearly results driven, they do take into account or they try to take into account as much as possible performances, but also a lot of it is sort. Of, it seems to be based upon sort of the training ground and his stuff being implemented, et cetera, mm. et cetera. I think, I think they've always said that they want to make sure that the head coach is, is, um, has got the backing of the players and, uh, is implementing, um, what, what kind of they want to see. I think the club has quite clearly without really openly stating it, they've hit the reset button and they're trying to, they're trying to get back to where they want to do, but they're now having to do it on a smaller budget, et cetera, et cetera. Noting the fact that, um, you know, when the, when the Pozzos took over the club back in 2012, clearly we were in, in a worse state. Mm. So it can be mm. done. It can be done. I think it's all about time. And if I'm being totally honest, um, I would I would be looking to see where the club are after we played Middlesbrough on the 30th of September. You know, two months into the season, eight or nine games down. How are we looking? Um, I think that's I think that's basically where we're at. But um, I think we have to be real here, and I think most people are. You know, like yes, I was disappointed that we lost yesterday, but I actually I came away from the game thinking, well, you know, we weren't terrible. We played we played pretty good stuff. Um, obviously, just frustrated that we couldn't score. And or create a clear enough chance. Yes, that's a problem, but that's one of those things, in my opinion, that that comes with with time. And I think, I think it looks like the players are trying to uh, are trying too hard a little bit at the moment yeah. to make something happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think they just need to settle down. Um, but no, I, I'm kind of with you on that one. I, I think it's everybody, all everyone in the media is going to start talking about. Um, oh, it smells under pressure. Yes, um, you're not going to stop that. Um, if we haven't won, you know, a couple more games between now and and uh, sort of the end of September, as I was as I was talking about, then uh, then questions are going to be asked. But I think for me, it's all about the performances. Um, and at the moment, I think the performances as a, as a team, yeah, they're pretty good. If we um, if we'd stuck one chance away against Plymouth, and if we hadn't enabled that counter attack against Blackburn. Mm. that Blackburn scored yesterday, then we're sat here on um, seven points, not four. And I think we'd be like, yeah, well, the team's playing well, you know, you know, we look pretty solid, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's mm. a very different uh, conversation that we're having um, if it's not for an odd moment here and there across those games. Yeah. Um, it, does that make sense, mate? Yeah, it does. It does make sense. I think it's, it's interesting. Um, I've seen a lot of this sort of uh, what expected points going around oh, yeah. on social media a lot, and I think it's quite interesting to see you know, we're second on that, and it does show that the football is there. It's just not quite uh, translating onto the score sheet. On another day, yesterday, Martins gets two goals. We probably score against Plymouth, and you know we're, we're on nine points. Um, we did have a couple of chances against Stoke as well, but you know we're not going to yeah, win every game of football this season. But I think the football, the the actual style of football, the chances we're creating are there. Yeah. I just think we need the floodgates to open, and it's a it seems a bit crazy to say we're waiting for the floodgates to open, having scored <laughs> four goals in the first half of the first game of the season. But you know, I, I, brought I'm, in a new striker. I'm We've brought in a new striker. Yeah. We just we just have to see where it goes. We just have to see. Where I think it goes. We, we just need we just need one to go in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, you know. Yeah. It, we just we just we need we we need a penalty. We need one to go in on someone's knee. We need something that that I think at least gives the the team the belief that they can go out and and create something. Yeah. Um, which they evidently can. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. So. so James, speaking yeah, of the new strike we brought in. Uh -huh. I, I feel like I'm going to butcher the name, but Mileta Rajevic, on a five-year yeah, deal, five-year deal worth about a million pounds, um, obviously undisclosed from the club, but it's reported to be about a million pounds. He came yeah. on to make his debut, replacing Bio. What yeah. did you think of him in the in the sort of twenty twenty-five minutes he he made? Uh, 
I thought he'd put himself about. I thought um, he looked like he was more willing to go into challenges with um, central defenders compared to Bayo. Uh, I thought he laid the ball off pretty well a couple of times. Mm. I just think um, I think he was just a victim to the team not quite knowing what they wanted to do when they got the ball near the box. Um, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people, I think, you know, um, there's a lot of people being like, oh, my God, who have we signed? Blah, blah, blah. It's way, 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 way too early to be the sort of talking about that. Yeah. Um, you know, he was chucked onto a team that was uh, at the end of the game sort of scrambling to create anything. So I think it's way too early to, to talk about it. But, you know, mm. he looked he looked aggressive. He looked um, big, physical. Um, I think if, if we can just now sort of build our... Um, build up play around him I think that's when we get a better idea of, of the kind of player that we've signed um, yeah but but put it this way I wasn't wowed but I also acknowledge that you know he, he he's had a hell of a lot going on in the last 48 hours for him personally and then you're asking him to go on against Blackburn Rovers um, and uh, and you know turn the game around I mean that would be the stuff of dreams right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think the uh, obviously the hype is there. He's he's scored a lot of goals in Sweden. Mm-hmm. He's scored a lot of goals wherever he's played, uh, really. So he's obviously got the big move to to England. But you know you, you've got to give him some time. I think the the dimension yeah, completely totally. cha- changes when Bio goes off and Rajevic comes on. Then yeah. you know I feel like the the team must have been a little bit like oh well how do we change well, it uh, in order it's just, to bring yeah, him it's, in? It's just another person, isn't it? It's another personality to work out. You know, mm. it, does he like to make a run to the near post? Does he like to sort of check his runner and and sort of pull pull back for a, for a cut back? Does he like to flick the ball on with his head? Do you know, the the play they haven't been training with him. Like how on earth are you expected to? Mm. You know, make that make those uh, in in game under the pressure of of trying to pull it pull it back. Yeah, very different. It would be a very different story compared to him coming on, say, on the sixty minute mark against QPR in the opening day of the season, for example. Um, yeah, watch the great video done by the 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 guys over at the Watford Way with um uh, the 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 dude called Tim, I think it was, who was a Kalmar uh, fan, and and they spoke a lot about Ryevich, and they were saying sort of how much potential he's got. But I think he is actually going through a little bit of a um a little bit of a, a drought at the moment. I think um in terms of goals, I think the Kalmar was struggling a little bit um in the league when when he was signed. Um, so yes, he's match fit, but he's also not in like the best form possible. Yeah, at this he's, at this he's like Watford. Time. Yeah, he's just a bit misfiring, right? So, um, I like the look of him. I thought the the media surrounding his signing was great. Um, he looks like a a real person that the fans could absolutely warm to. I think if he just if he gets on a real run of form, bags a couple of goals in the next three or four games, then I think the the fans get behind him, and I think it's a different story. And I think everyone falls in love with him, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. it's too early for me to make a to make a judgment on the guy. Um, but I'm I'm just hoping that he can actually sort of deliver. But but the the re- elephant in the room for me is the fact that um, the number nine that we've gone for this season is a million pound potentially an unheard of striker from from Sweden. Yeah, well he can't be worse no, than Ray Manor. Hey, that's harsh, mate. That's harsh. <laughs> Perhaps too harsh. On, Perhaps too harsh on Ray Manor. <laughs> And tell so, uh, Uncle Ron. <laughs> so, we will we will move swiftly on. So, in the notes, James, I've got a couple yeah. other players I wanted to mention. Yeah, Ryan Andrews, obviously mm-hmm. one of our own. He's come yeah. in, made leaps and bounds. He's come on, you know, he's, he's come on really well in the in his what was it, twelve twelve senior appearances he's made now. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I just think at the moment. His end product and his decision making is lacking, and I think you know when when we're playing this football that really sort of slow the play down, make a lot of intricate passes around the edge of the box, try and you know unpick uh, unlock the 
the defence, that kind of that kind of football. How important is that decision making, and do you think that you know he's the right person for the job? Uh, well, that's a great question. Um, I kind of I kind of agree with you on on the decision making aspect. Uh, it's um, it it's a shame because everybody everybody wants him to do well, and and I think he has that. I think you know for for a dude that made his senior debut as at seventeen and in in last season's team, and did very well. Uh, I think he's equipped himself uh, brilliantly, um, and my my concern is that uh, my concern with Ryan Andrews at the moment is more that I think that the team is having to rely on sort of individuals at the moment to make something happen it yeah if 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 the team was performing well and we were clicking really nicely and we were like a well-oiled machine I think Ryan Andrews comes into that side and is and is really really effective because um he's really positive he likes to attack um I think the players would know or I think he would then have a clearer idea in his mind where he wants to play a pass um because he likes to take the ball over his shoulder and play a first-time ball, I've noticed into mm. into the channel, which is great. But the players have got to know that that's that that's going to come. And but um, so yeah, it is it is a bit frustrating. But um, I feel like I feel like I want to to give him time and cut him a, a bit of slack. Yeah. <laughs> However, um, I'm a I'm a uh, yeah, I feel like that might be a slight problem area for us at the moment, and um, because I'm also slightly concerned about Ngakia coming back in. Um, I think I think Ngakia carries the ball better than than Andrews, mm. and is a bit more defensively sound. But if we're worried about Andrews' final ball, for me, Ngakia's is. Um, and it's. I feel bad for saying it, um, but I, I I feel like Ngaki's ball is not as good no. as Andrews is. No, no. Um, so so I think I think if I'm being honest, that's the one position I think that we're lacking in at the moment. Mm. And do I expect them to go out and spend money on a on a high quality right back? No, I, I can't see it happening. No. So I think I think we are where we are with those two. Um, I almost feel as if like um, one of those two has to fail before christmas for the club to go oh, actually we need to go and sign a right back yeah um and that's i know we spoke about it and i'll keep by sell and uh, season preview that's why i'm so frustrated that ferreira went but obviously yeah. if, the, if he didn't yeah. if he didn't want to be here then then i've got no interest in being here but um yeah that's kind of where i'm at with andrews um if that if that makes sense mate yeah i, I do think that you know that there's definitely a place for him in the team i think it does go back to that the probably the more senior players are too trying to work out how to you know play in in the system and mm. create chances so it, i think it does go back to the fact that they're probably trying to force it a little bit too much which you know probably singles out andrews a bit more than others um when you know he's just feeling himself into senior football let alone playing in the championship and creating yeah. chances when he's a right back, you know, a lot a lot of the time in academies, you know, these right backs are just purely trained to defend and, you know, look good in a in a, in a defensive shape. So Ishmael is asking him to do quite a lot going forward, I think. Uh, especially yeah. playing that inverted wing backs and coming into the coming into the middle of the pitch to get onto the ball, which I think Andrews does better than Ngakia. So yeah. I think going forward there it'll be a good, you know, a good little fight be between the two of them for for that right back spot. I just think, you know, once once the team starts firing on all cylinders, it will help mm. both of them really, but I think it will help Andrews far more. It will help him settle down and I think it'll it won't, you know, single him out as much as somebody that seems to give the ball away quite a lot and where a lot of attacks seem to break down a little bit when when he's trying to find the uh, find that final pass. Mm. So yeah, yeah. that's that's why I'm at with Andrews. And then we've got this other player, this attacking player, Yasha Aspria. Mm. 
So, James, mm. it's come up a couple of times this window. Aspria yep. is potentially trying to force and force a move away from from Watford into the Premier League. Yeah, one goal last season. Yeah, has he done enough to justify a move? In my personal opinion, not even close. Uh, he's not even he's not done anywhere near um, the level of. He's not even sort of had the level of end product yet that um, João Pedro had, who no, has no. Clearly, who, who, in my opinion, justified his move to Brighton based off the fact of his clear natural talent, ball carrying, um, but also goals and assists. He did start to acquit himself with goals and assists. Yeah, but I think people also forget that João also had a season in the Premier League with some goals a promotion season in the championship where, yeah, he started well, but I think he got a bit tired and leggy towards the end of the season. And well, he still scored goals, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Um, so so I think Zhao had, has a larger body of work. Hmm. I think Aspria, I think, it's, in my opinion, Aspria actually has a lot more... Um, he's, he's, a, he's a year or two younger, isn't he, than Zhao at the yeah, moment. Yeah, But I think, I think Aspria's... Um, He's, I, I think the guys from From the Rookery and said it, and I agree with it, that Aspria is actually potentially further ahead in, in terms of his footballing ability than Zhao was when he first arrived. Yeah. But we've not yet we've not yet seen no. Aspria. Um, hmm. We've not had a a patch of form where Aspria is the best player in in the game, or, or the league, because uh, you know there were times where Zhao last season was the best player in the league. Yeah, and I, I will say that, and I think you can evidence that, um, particularly where around the time where we beat Luton four nil, that October yeah, November yeah, period, yeah. Zhao was Zhao was the best player in the league. Um, is Aspria there yet? No, one goal, not good enough. Um, I, I've lost count of the chances um, that Aspria has had, and he has butchered. And maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but I think for someone who wants to go to the Premier League, you have to score that goal against Stoke. He had a chance. Um, uh, yesterday against Blackburn, I think it was in the first half where yeah, it sort of cut yeah. back to him, and, he, and you just were like, just hit the thing, man. Um, I think he lacks confidence in front of goal at the moment, but if you want to be that kind of person, you've got to at least be scoring a couple here and there. His 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 vision and passing is is very very good. He he put Mark Rajevic through yesterday. Yeah. Um, we've got lots of evidence of him making good incisive passes, but those are kind of one offs at the moment. Um, if yeah. he wants to leave, and if he wants to leave, and um, a Premier League club is willing to to spend a, a decent wedge on him with future sell-ons and the clauses, then then sell him. In my opinion, um, I think though, if the club does that, that's an acknowledgement that there's no chance of promotion this year, and, and they're just kind of trying to reset the squad completely because um, you need a little bit of that stardust, I think, in the squad, yeah. which a spread does bring. But I, I, I don't think he's at the Premier League level yet, not even close. No, I don't think he is either. I think in terms of uh, the potential that a spread has, I think his ceiling is higher than João Pedro. I think at this point in João's career, a is better uh, at this age. Um, hmm. but is that he doesn't have anything to show for it? I think you know it's all all well and good. You know, I know it's down to the people that get onto the end of these sort of incisive passes and put them in the net. But at the moment, he doesn't. You know, th- there's no assist to his name. He only got one yeah. goal last season. He played quite a lot of football as well, coming off the bench quite a few times. Yeah, and uh, it was at a few games last season. And there was a number of times where he was through on goal. He had shots in the box. And he kind of scuffed his chance, or or he missed it. So yeah, yeah. I do yeah, think no. that kind of if he scores again this season, I think he will stop having such um, of a bad time in front of goal. I think he's just I, I don't even know how to describe it really. He just sort of struggles, really struggles with putting the ball in in the net. Um, yeah. But again, maybe that's just sort of inexperience. He doesn't doesn't hey, bring mate, back I... himself. I think it all comes back to what we said right at the start. I think we've got a lot of exciting attacking players at the moment mm. who all are desperate to score goals, right? And that's what's leading to the, you know, the the lack of um, 
the lack of scores on the uh, in the games because mm. they're all trying too hard. I think at the moment. I think yeah. If I can point one sort of finger of criticism at Ismail and and the, the management at the at the moment, um, maybe they do need to do a little bit more work on on sort of phases of play and creating chances in that final third because yeah, yeah, it definitely. does look a little bit like it does look a little bit like the plan is to get the ball out to the 18 yard box with either Semmer or Martins and then it's like right okay now we attack the box but it's very much cut inside and then see what happens and more often than not that's a shot whipped across the face of the goal which more more often than not doesn't go in yeah um so so yeah that's kind of where i'm at yeah i think it's interesting that you bring that up because personally from from what i saw against in against blackburn the phases of play were solid you could see what we're trying to do but it does seem quite slow at the moment it's just easy to defend against and it really kind of shows why we have such high possession of the ball but then we don't really create enough with it It does seem like it's a little bit slow here and there but then again we were missing people like loser in the first half he obviously was dropped to the bench um yeah oh no i absolutely love it but yeah we, we obviously were missing somebody with a bit of creativity to speed up the play and dictate what happens around the edge of the box um obviously then loser comes on and we concede so then we're chasing again it's a completely different uh scenario for for people to you know come against um it was forward. it was and it was his pass by the way that set off that counter yeah it was um, it watched was. the highlights back yeah. it was loser's poor poor ball um but i'm all for that by the way as a sort of changing topic slightly but um i like the fact that ismail is it's been a long time i think at what since watford had the the word sort of coming out from the club is there's you know no one bigger than the team no one bigger than the club yeah i think they're really trying to ground a lot of these players and oh, if yeah. lose if loser is is you know late to things or is disrespecting it then then yeah, send the message out because um, at the end of the day, if loser will have a um, mark against his name, from and most importantly from his perspective, other future clubs. If yeah, uh, yeah if yeah. um if scouts or you know if the word gets out that yeah he's 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 a great player but you know not too sure about his uh, sort of attitude. Um, then he's not really going to get the the big moves that he wants, so he's he's going to have to tidy that up. So I like it. I like the fact. I like the honesty and the frankness with which. Um, yeah, I, I uh, like it as well. It's Ismail has been speaking with lately, uh, and some of the other some of the other players, Porteous in particular. Um, I'm, I'm all for that at the moment. Yeah, I think it definitely keeps them grounded. It also could be just that shake up that certain players need. Um, yeah, obviously there's that story of. Ben Foster being out on loan, he's turning late to, to training at Watford and, and all, mm-hmm. doing this and that. And obviously, Boothroyd obviously then tell, took it back to Alex Ferguson and, and Foster got absolutely <laughs> scolded for it, but it, it kicked him in the right direction and obviously he went on yeah. to have a, have a great career. So that kind of cultural reset, which has probably been needed around Watford for, for quite a while, it would yeah, seem with absolutely. certain podcasts and interviews coming out recently, which make it seem like players thought they were <laughs> massive in comparison to the club, not mm. naming names. But I think that kind right. of cultural reset and the way that Ishmael goes has gone about it, saying, look, you know, if if, uh, if he's done this badly or he's disrespected this or he's turned up late, he's not turned up on time then you know what fair enough I, I really respect that i respect him sticking to his guns and yeah yeah it, it was like the uh just like the substitutions last week at stoke i think it just makes it really clear that ishmael is in charge and there's no one bigger than the club there's no one too big to be taken off and there's obviously no one too big to be to be dropped following a disciplinary um absolutely incident so, absolutely. Anything else to add before we just discuss some of the results and the bit of a lone watch for from this the past week, James? No, mate, not from me. I, I don't think so. Anything else that you've missed? Ah, uh, 
well there's a there's a couple bits but i think we'll we'll save that for for a different pod we'll probably wait until the end of the window before we discuss anything further in terms of positions and who we should have mm-hmm. brought in or who we have brought yeah. in that kind of thing but then we'll we'll move it on to the results and the the lone watch as it were so Watford FC women started yeah. their WSL 2, the championship season, with a one-all draw against Durham. It's a great start for Indeed. them. Um, really hope they can avoid relegation this season. It would be really good to see them cement themselves in the WSL 2 and uh, kick on from there. Yeah, too right. And uh, the, the, it sounds like it's going to be a, a real tough league for them this season. Mm. Um, the WSL 2, it sounds like a little bit of a... I, th- I think uh, the women's side of things need to have a little bit of a shake-up because it does sound like um, there's only one promotion spot and two relegation spots. So you get a lot of the teams coming down from the, the WSL who are uh, clearly still able to uh, afford to pay um, the, well, yeah, professional the, the well. money. Uh, so, yeah, sounds like it might be a bit, a bit of a challenge, but uh, hopefully they can get off to a good start and uh, get some points on the board. I think the prediction from... Uh, some of the experts was was not up but not down. So if they can if they can keep themselves in the league, then then that'd be great. And uh, all all uh, best wishes to all involved with those guys. But yeah, I think a, a pretty credible draw to Durham in the in the first game. Yeah, just sort of, just sort of give that give that stability. Maybe stay a season in the in the WSL to keep yourself up, provide that sort of stability. Then you can bring in some better players and maybe even kick mm. on from there. But hopefully that goes well for them. They have a great season. Uh, but, yeah, really good vibe around the uh, the women's side at the moment. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I would absolutely agree. And uh, they were the one bright spot last season, weren't they? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, they get a good amount of coverage. Yeah. So then we'll move on to the lone watch of sorts. Shaq Ford. The boy yeah. scored his yeah. first goal on loan at Leighton Orient. And you know what? This this does actually make me very happy. Uh, we called it out on the keep by sell at the <laughs> end of last season. And it's coming to fruition. We know what we're talking about on the pod. That's yeah. why you should subscribe. A broken clock is right twice a day, mate. So, yeah, yeah we nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> nailed it. Very pleased for him. Um the first of many, hopefully. First of many. Yeah, yeah I hope so, so. Some more experience under his belt this season and can kick on from there. Yeah, it's looking good for Shaq as well, isn't it? Because he, he did well at York uh, and they were they were struggling a bit last season. Yeah, now he's very back well in the Back in the Football League and uh, he's scoring the goals again. And uh, we spoke about this at great length on our, our Academy episode, but it just shows that it just shows the people who are trying to come to Watford or have a decision, do I go to Watford or not? Well, yeah, because you either Ryan Andrews it and make it into the first team or uh, you're going to be given an opportunity to um, to develop and uh, get and play in the Football League. And as Shaq's doing, he's, he's scoring in the Football League now. So, yeah, um, yeah ho- hope he, hope he um, has a great season uh, and things are looking up um, for him. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's a great point. Um, just to just to further that, really, even if you don't make it at Watford, it definitely gives you a, a spotlight uh, for for other yeah. other clubs. Uh, Adrian Blake got his big move to uh, the Netherlands in the summer, so he's kicked on from from Watford, and it gives you Harry you know, Mass. Yeah, Harry Mass going to to Manchester United. Even players like Jack Greaves have been under the radar from from big clubs yeah. like Celtic and that, but. Fortunately for us, Jack Greaves decided against moving away from from Watford, yeah, which is which is brilliant, news. brilliant news for us. But yeah, well, I think if I think it, I think if that pathway is in there, oh yeah, oh yeah, people like Harry Amass and uh, maybe even Adrian Blake go. Well, actually, no, I'll stick around because yeah, I might not get into the Watford first team, but I might I might get out into League One or, or League Two and uh, sort of show my worth. Um, and yeah, and and then it's better for everybody. But um. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's just it's because it's just sort of coming in now. Obviously, we had a, quite a long period as as we discussed on the the academy episode. Um, you know, it, it's been quite a long time since we've had a real player come through the academy ranks and then stick with the club. So it, yeah. you know, it does make sense for these young players that want to have a proper career in in the game from a younger age that they do move away. But we're shifting it around bit of a mentality switch at, at Watford especially with the academy and the first team 
So yeah, very very impressed, and uh, we're looking forward to you know another great season of development for these for these young players. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you very much for listening to the pod or watching it. If you are watching on YouTube, please remember to subscribe and like the video. It really does help us out. Leave a comment if you agree or disagree with us. Um, we'd love to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Twitter as well. We're still kicking about on Twitter or X as it is now known as. Um, yeah. So follow us on there. We're very active on there. And yeah, leave us a five star review, please, on Spotify. Really helps us out as well. And we're you know, we're just about everywhere on the audio apps. Um so they'll yeah. be on screen if you uh if you you know watching on YouTube, they'll be on screen so you can see, you know, maybe if you're if you're out if you're doing something, you can still listen to us on the go. Thank you very much for listening and we'll catch you again very shortly. See you later guys. See you later, have a good one. <laughs>